What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So, we're going to be talking about Arch Linux today. Arch install has been progressing very slowly, but doing the best job that it can. And for those who were confused, Arch install is an installer for Arch Linux that allows you to have a user-friendly like experience when installing Arch Linux. Pretty straightforward. It gives you the ability to install desktops, uh, graphics drivers, your own language, username, have everything set up and good to go in less than four minutes. And we're going to be covering that in today's video. I'm going to be doing this in VMware, so we'll all have the best experience possible. And that is going to be your test environment, because if you're new to Arch Linux, I want you to test it first in a VM and then move it to real hardware. So let's begin. All right, so let's begin. I've been selected the installer disk, which you can download in the description below. I'll have a link, of course, and we're going to hit other Linux. So 5.x kernel 64 bit. I'm going to type this as Arch. And we are going to be going over a secondary method, which is called ArchFi. Uh, it's the one that I recommend the most, but this is just going to be a clean install that is hopefully representative of what you want to do when switching to Arch Linux. Because honestly, I do recommend switching to Arch Linux over any other distro. Uh, it is a very big deal because the Steam Deck is on Arch with KDE and I recommend it. It has the best kernel that you can optimize Arch the most. You can get a custom kernel for optimized game speeds and so much more. You can even have the newest message drivers and Arch has been testing their packages before release. So you won't end up having a dead system because of a system update anymore. They've changed that. So another thing is Arch is extremely user friendly, new users and old. It's a good pathway into Linux because it doesn't baby you. It can, but it chooses not to because everything is so well done in Arch that it's just you want a package. Okay sudo pacman dash capital s discord git cmake whatever it there will be a package for it and if there isn't you just use the aur everything's in the aur so we're going to do a complete setup we're going to do arch install we're going to install yay we're going to have a desktop environment and we're going to have a user-friendly uh gui that installs packages as well from the aur and the community repos so Let's power on this virtual machine after, of course, we do this. I need to go into advanced, set that there, and we are going to disable side channel mitigation. And I just hit X on this. I want to stretch this so you guys can see. And we're going to go full screen. Here we are. Now, booting up is going to take a minute or two. As you can see, it's currently running everything it needs to. Now, I know this can be scary. I get that. I've been there. I've done that. It was once a point in time when I was terrified to even look at this. When it booted up into this, I was like, and this was before the installer, I had no idea. I was just like, nope, I'm going back to something else. But these days, I look at this and it makes me happy. Here's why. That's it. Arch install. It's going to find the newest Arch Linux mirrors. We're going to do 26. Then we're going to do 65. Then I'm going to choose one. And we're going to hit enter. And I'm going to hit zero. I'm going to hit zero again. And yes, you do want uh, sub volumes because it helps to uh, recover things. Do you want to use Grub's bootloader? Yes, custom kernels. This is very, very important. And we're going to swap on VRAM, Arch, Linux, password, password. This is where you enter your username and set your password, and you want to be a sudoer, so hit yes. Next, we're going to enter. And we're not going to skip adding a second user unless you have someone else that's going to be using this. So just hit enter. Don't enter anything else. And here's the thing. There's two directions you can go. You can install a desktop that you want. So you hit zero and you select the desktops, which will be GNOME, KDE, Sway, or anything else. 
or you can go one the minimum install and choose the desktop environment you want anyway by just typing in either plasma xfce4 uh, gnome it's all there now i want this to be a cute fish install so i'm going to be choosing one for minimum install i'm going to go with pipe wire zero for the hard kernel or sorry the normal kernel and i'm going to type cute fish sddm we're going to be choosing git discord and that's it and now it's a waiting game so you want to use the network manager and i'm going to just skip this and set that inside of the distro and it's going to do everything from here automatically so we're going to jump out of this for now and if it lets me this is the one time that it does not want to do what it's supposed to do try this now when it's done i will come back and we'll boot into the desktop operating system and we'll check it out Okay, so we're back and what we need to do is this allows us to go into our current uh, installation, everything that we just hit. We're going to hit yes and I'm going to do system CTL enable SDDM. That's it. That's all we're going to do. And we really don't need to do much else. We can just literally hit reboot after hitting exit. Let it update the FS tab real quick and reboot so this is going to bring us into our desktop environment and of course it's going to do its little crashy thing because vmware is buggy as hell but we're going to just power it back on and everything should go according to plan and that's it we're going to hit enter it's going to boot up into the login manager which is going to be ssdm so simple display manager yeah, you see, this is definitely uh, the problem when it comes to this type of stuff. It does not always let us. And the first things first, we're going to open up the terminal and we're going to do sudo hackman dash capital S Firefox because we're going to need the browser for this. Okay. And once installation is complete on this, we are going to install the open VM tools. Now, I know this is a lot harder than what I originally said. Again, choose desktop if you're not like me and you don't want this pretty desktop environment, okay? I'm just saying, the only reason I got this is because I like having the cleanest install possible, which means the lowest amount of RAM used, and that actually is important to some people. So everything's pretty much installed. Let's read... No, it's KWIN based, so it's not going to actually do what we need to. So we're going to open up FireFail real quick a browser which is currently dying we're going to search yay a u r this is the one this is the thing that's going to get us everything and we're going to download the current snapshot okay we're going to save this file we're going to open this up and we're going to install arc I hit yes for arc because that way when it's done we can just go ahead in here to downloads and we can open with extract extract done so in here you're going to right click and open up terminal and we're going to do uh make pkg si now this does have to compile things so before we do this we're actually going to do sudo nano etsy make pkg.com nano is not installed so of course we're going to install something else this is called G-Edits. This will allow you to edit things instead of in the terminal, but in a text editor. I recommend doing this for people that are new more than anything else. Because using terminal commands can sometimes put people off. So like this, we're gonna scroll all the way down until we find this right here. We're gonna take this off. And I'm going to switch this to six cores. And we're going to hit save. So this will enable us to compile faster. Okay. Now make pkg-si. 
You're going to hit yes to install everything that's needed, which is basically just go. And it should take no time at all. As you can see, I'm upstairs now in a different room in the hotel, so we have faster internet. You can install go. It's going to download yay from somewhere. I don't know where it's downloading it from. I think it's from GitHub. I'll be grabbing the source code. Looks like it's extracting the source code and it's CDing in, creating a build directory, and doing everything it needs to do. Now it's entering a fake root environment, which allows you to install the application. So hit yes. Then we can do clear. Okay, let's get back to it. Now I have done the update of Cutefish and we're going to jump into settings real quick here. And I'm going to adjust everything else, and then we're going to jump straight into dealing with how to make Arch user friendly. And we're going to set that to where it needs to be. We're basically just going to full screen. Right. I forgot. I'm recording at 1440p. So, there. Now. Um, Cubefish is an amazing OS, but we're not here for that. And apparently we can't be here for much else because am I, can, am I able to just, I can't zoom in. That is a problem. We're going to go to settings and I'm going to check the font size. So here we go. Yay. Pamac. We're going to select Pamac all. So that one right there, we're going to hit two, just hit enter, 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 hit no, because who knows, they might come out with an update and hit enter again, enter your password, hit yes to install everything. And it should automatically go from here. This will end up installing Pamac all. And afterwards, when it's installed, you open it up, you search for any package you want. You can go into your settings, your preferences, go to third party, enable the UAR. AUR. I'm going to show you all of that. You even have snapped and flat hub packages, which means you should be officially good to go for everything. Now, it's going to end up modifying the kernel slightly. It's creating group for flat pack right now. That's what it's doing. It's grabbing icons, source files, extras, everything that it needs to get PanMac fully working. I know Linux can be scary, but it's not. It's just learning. And learning is never scary. Learning is improving yourself. You always want to keep improving yourself. Not only does it help you think faster, it helps you be better, but it also makes you help other people and want to help other people. It gets you away from misinformation like, Arch is not user friendly. You're new to Linux. You should go use Ubuntu. If you recommend Ubuntu for anybody that's new to Linux, you're basically screwing them over. They're not going to learn very much. Ubuntu is the idiot distro. It's meant for stupefying users into the easiest way imaginable. And the minute that they have a problem, they're not going to know how to fix it. At least with Arch, they teach you along the way how to fix things it's kind of cool like if a package that you just install screwed over your os you just remove it and the problem goes away or if one of the packages goes corrupt you just reinstall that package and it's fixed you can sudo downgrade that package you can sudo upgrade that package with downgrade uh, you can enable testing repos for the newest files you can go to the AUR for literally anything that's in Linux and any other distro. You want a desktop environment that doesn't currently exist inside the Arch repos, it exists in the AUR and you can grab it. Arch Linux is literally the go-to for everything that's cool and amazing. And it's the best gaming distro. It's the lightest distro. Arch is what you make it, whether you're new or experienced. So. What I'm saying is we're not stuck in the year 2005 anymore. So now we can exit out of the terminal and you don't ever have to use it again. So we open up Pamac all, as you can see right here. We're actually going to turn down the resolution because it's a bit ridiculous and I can barely see it, which means most of you can probably barely see it. All right. So this is Pamac. 
We're going to go to preferences. We're going to type in our password, third party, AUR. We're going to check for updates and development updates. And that's it. That's all you need to do. Now you can enjoy whatever you want. I, on the other hand, need to just turn this on to dark mode because I'm getting tired of the non-dark mode stuff. So if you want something like Discord, first I'd have to spell it right. There it is, both Discord and Discord Canary. Say you want Spotify. There's Spotify D, and if we actually click the AUR, you see Spotify. Say you want Cider, which is an Apple Music. It's basically Apple Music for Linux and Windows. There's Cider Git, that's the one you're gonna be installing. Pretty much it gives you everything you need. And that is your user-friendly Arch install for new users. We can also do sudo pacman-capital S steam. I believe that's in the 32-bit repository, so we would need to do sudo gedit slash etsy slash pacman.conf. Scroll down to the bottom. You see multi-lib is disabled. You want to remove the number sign. And then we're going to do this. That updates the repos. Then you want to install Steam. So hit yes. Steam is installing officially. So Steam is very easy to install. Discord's very easy to install. Spotify you can grab from the AUR. Cider you can grab from the AUR. Uh, any program that you want or need you can grab from the AUR. You can even go so far as grabbing Photoshop from GitHub and installing that using a single command, which is pretty cool. Anyway, there you go. You will have a user-friendly install of Arch Linux. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button, share the video, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time. If you have any questions, join my Discord in the Linux channel, tag me, and I'll see it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.